everybody, it's Mindy and I'm back with another tutorial for Neat and Tangled. Today we're going to be using the Hello Spring stamp set and the coordinating dies. And we're also going to be using the Friendly Florals. Now what we're going to be doing two different coloring techniques today. So first I want to practice using Copic markers. So we're going to practice blending. And I always encourage people to practice blending and to use those pieces of scrap papers that you're practicing with onto your cards. So that way you don't feel like you're just wasting your time and your paper and your ink on all these products and then not even doing anything with them. So I always like to kind of incorporate that. So that being said, we I go I went ahead and I took the the large background uh die right here, or stamp set, stamp and I embossed it with a clear embossing powder. And, and then I trimmed it down and now I'm going to use my Copic markers to create a gradient and it's going to have a really cool effect and it, it's almost like its own pattern paper. So we're going to start, I, I used a teal color combination. So we're going to use BG18, BG15, BG13, BG11, and BG10. And we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to go dark and all the way up to light. So you're gonna wanna take off your cap and you're gonna start at the end and you wanna go to the very, very edge of the paper. So that way there's no white. And I'm just gonna flick going up. And as you can see, I've already embossed the, the stamp so you're able to see that little bit of shiny coming through the, the Copic ink and it's you're able to see the words through the ink. So that was my BG18. Now I'm gonna take my BG15 and I'm just gonna keep moving up. So I'm doing that flicking technique and a lot of people get confused and they say that they, they can't get the whole flicking technique. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is, and it's kinda of hard to tell when, you first, when you're first when you going off of the paper with the darker color, but you see how much darker it is right here and now how much lighter it is on this side. So now when I go to lay down my next color, which is the BG15, it's gonna be, that, it's already gonna be that much lighter up here, so it's easier to blend in with the next color. So now I'm gonna go back into part of the BG18 that we laid down already, and I'm just gonna flick going up. Pushing the end here, it's kind of, not erasing, but you're blurring out that line. You're blending the colors through so that way you have that nice smooth gradient. And another thing that people get, um, or uh, you know, is always a question is, what kind of paper am I using? I'm using the Copic Express It Blending Card. This is my favorite paper for coloring with Copics because of all of the layers that I put on it. So that is the number one paper that I recommend. So. Now I've laid down my BG18 and my BG15. So I'm gonna get my BG13 and we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna continue moving up through the whole paper. So I'm doing that heavy flick and you could see that it's lighter up on the opposite end where we, after, or the, from the opposite side of, that we laid down our marker. And now I'm gonna go with my Next color, which is BG11. And I'm gonna go right in between those two colors, or in uh, right on over that BG13. Really getting that blend in between those colors. And I could tell my ink is a little dry. This marker needs to be filled. So, you could see a little bit that, let me see if I could zoom, where you could see the, the difference between the two, so since it's not that smooth. So now I'm gonna go back with my BG13, and I'm gonna start back here where I first started with the BG13, and I'm gonna do a heavier flick, so that way I can kind of get rid of that line. And then I'm gonna repeat my BG11. and it kind of softens it up a little bit by adding that extra layer. So I have just a tiny bit of white left, so I'm gonna 
take my BG10 and I'm just gonna continue all the way up to the edge of the paper. Now, since I want this to be a little bit, I, I, a little bit more dark to light, I'm gonna go back over my BG18. Adding that extra layer of ink just to give it that a little bit more dimension. That's also another way if you if you're when you're coloring and you don't have that good blend or sometimes it looks kind of mucky and the ink is not blending, sometimes you need that extra layer of ink in order to get the colors blending, moving on the paper a little bit better. So now I'm gonna take my BG15, and again, just I'm just gonna repeat everything that I just did. So that way I have a nice, smooth gradient, and all of the ink is blending together well. And you don't have to even emboss anything. You could use these on, on your die cuts, which I'll, I'm gonna show you in a second, but you could do this on, on your scrap pieces of Copic Express It paper, and you could even go from, you know, if you're going from blue and having, you know, yellow up here and have them kind of meet in the middle. And then you could take all of those scraps and you can cut out your word dies. So that way you always have, and then just stick them in like a little container for your sentiments. And anytime you need a sentiment, just go through what you've already done and pull one out. That's also another great um, way to practice coloring and blending your Copics and then using your, you know, kind of like recycling your, your projects. Okay, so kind of got off track there. I use the BG15. Now I'm gonna take my 13 and repeat. And then my 11 again. And also going over it that second time really brings the words out if you do emboss the background. And so now I'm gonna do my BG10. All right. So what I'm going to do in a second is I'm gonna just mount this on a couple of layers here before I stick them on my card but I wanted to get to the word dies. So I've already cut out, I love, 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 love this die set. It cuts out the words very thin so you can actually see the word, that's the green one. And then it gives it, and then you also have the option to die cut the outline so that way you have that outline. And what I did was I actually stamped, using this, the spring, I stamped this stamp in Versamark and I stamped it onto the teal cardstock and I embossed it. So then when I die cut the words out, so now you can see that it's embossed and it has this nice little shiny shimmer to it. And then I just die cut the outline, the background in white. So that way I can, I mounted it on, I've already glued it on. So we're gonna also use that on our card. So the second thing that we're going to be doing is coloring this small little flower onto our card base. So I've already stamped it and we're doing the no line coloring. So I stamped it in my Memento ink and I didn't get too elaborate with this, with the design, with the details in the flower coloring because I wanted the main focus really to be the background that we've just created here. So, but I did want to add just a little bit of color. So what colors you're going to need is YG63, G20, E55, YR15, and YR20. And we're gonna start with our G63. And along the bottom of the, the leaves, I'm just going to trace going up. So I'm just outlining the image just from the bottom. And I wanted this to kind of look like a real soft, almost like a watercolor look. You know, I didn't want to get too detailed, and, and you, even if you go out of the lines a little bit and you can't see it, since it is the note line technique, you'll be you won't be able to tell. But it, that also gives it that no, uh, or I'm sorry, the watercolor technique look. 
So then I'm gonna do this leaf over here, just along the bottom, and then I'm going to trace down the center of the stem. All right, and that's it for that. Now I'm gonna go ahead, actually, you know what, in between these leaves, I'm just gonna make another little line going up the center. So now I'm gonna take my G20 and I'm just, I'm gonna start at the opposite end of the bottom part of the leaf that we already colored and I'm just gonna lightly follow it all the way in where I'm not, I'm just filling it in, just filling the rest of the leaf in. That way it's really soft. It starts to blur down here, so it's blending those colors, but it's it's not overpowering. So that way our, that background that we created is gonna stand out, but this is gonna give it that pop of color. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing with the for the flowers. And I'm using the YR15 and YR20, so just two colors. So very, very simple. This is a great way to practice you know, or if you're just starting out with using Copics. So I'm going to take the YR15 and I'm just gonna go in the center of the flower. So those are the petals that are on the back. These are the petals that are in the front. So I'm just gonna go along the bottom. So it's the same thing, just like how we did with the, with the leaves. And then down here too, I'm just gonna do the bottom part of this little flower. And now I'm going to fill it in with the YR20. So I'm going to start at this end over here, and I'm just going to push the color, filling in the rest of the flower. Now, if you're wondering, this is actually not Copic paper that I'm using. That's another reason why I'm not getting into many details, because it won't be able to stand all the different um, layers of it, all the layers of ink that I would originally put on and it would start to really seep off of the page. So I'm really keeping this very simple and not as many layers. Now, I, I do wanna take my E55 or any other brown and I wanna add a little bit of definition for this flower over here. So that way we could really tell the difference between the all four of the, pe the petals. So I'm just gonna, again, very, very small little flicks in the center part and also along the bottom and just so it matches I'm just gonna I'm not gonna go all the way where we how as much as we did the wire 15 but I just want to add a little bit so now I'm gonna go back and instead of when you're coloring something orange you you can't really use like the grays to deepen the color or to shadow it so you have to use the browns so and I don't want it to appear brown so I want it to be a darker version of the orange so I'm going to go back over it with my YR15 and just give a little flick replacing that brown making it that darker orange very 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 subtle so now I'm going to go back with my YR20 and I'm just going to blur that harsh line so I'm just going to pull or flick however you it would be easier for you to kind of imagine yourself doing. So you could either think of it as flicking out that color to blend it or pulling it out. So again, I'm gonna do this side over here. So just little, little baby flicks, just, just for that pop of color. Now I'm gonna take my white gel pen and all, all along the center part, so that way you can really tell that it's the actual center of the flower, I'm just going to make a whole bunch of little white dots for the center of the flower. And then I'm just gonna add a couple over here just for a little shine. And that is it. So I am going to quickly put my card together and then I will show you the finished card in just a second. Okay, so here we have it. We have our finished card and we've used all sorts of different techniques with the embossing and learning how to blend our Copic markers. I hope you enjoyed this month's tutorial and I will see you again next month.